Hey there, I pray this video encourages you and helps you grow and become more like Jesus. Follow along with the notes linked in the description. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Enjoy. Well, um, it has been my, or is my honor and privilege to continue on the series that um, Pastor Ryan is doing on the end times. And I think it's pretty timely, isn't it? Um, because I think that, uh, as the scripture says, God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. And I think it was very, very timely that he took this on in order to help us to understand the end times and, um, and, and what is going on in our world. And the fact that we as believers do not have to panic at all, but we are at peace with what is happening, okay? We don't have to be in peace as we are at peace. Even the world is falling apart. Okay, so today I want to talk about two different signs. One is the increase of knowledge. I don't know if you've noticed, but things are just kind of uh, increasing exponentially with technology and everything that is going on. And then also the spread of the gospel. In the last days, there will be the spread of the gospel. So I want to take us back to Matthew 24. And I'm going to look at, uh, begin in verses 7 and 8. It says, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pangs, as uh, Pastor Ryan has preached before. The one thing I just want to point out is that in the last days, I don't know if you know this, do you know that the world is kind of shaking a little bit? There are earthquakes, there are strange things happening, there is actually events that are happening that seem, the scientists believe, are kind of unusual. And they actually say, we have climate change. Do you know why I don't worry about climate change? Because God isn't going to allow mankind to destroy his world. Amen? <laughs> now, I, I, I think we need to do our part, okay? And I've always thought that. But I think that what happens is, is that the people that are in this earth, on this earth, that are most worried about it are the ones that don't have that spiritual discernment. And they don't realize that this is not our world. Okay? We will take care of it, but I'm not going to worry about what happens. But there is, in the last days, there's going to be a lot of things that you will see. What I'm hoping that we see is snow in Delaware this winter. <laughs> we have yet to see it. I see some people shaking their heads no. I didn't use my snow shovel one time last year. I guess I should buy a snowblower because that's when it'll happen or that's when it won't happen, right? So don't be alarmed when things happen. Everybody's got a scientific explanation, but isn't it possible that God wants to shake us up a bit to pay attention to him? Amen. That we're not paying attention to him. So don't be alarmed when you see things happen, okay? So let's go to Matthew 24, verses 12 to 14. It says, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. And Pastor Ryan preached on that last week. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel, verse 14, of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. It is important to understand that God is going to spread his gospel through the entire world because I don't think he wants to end this world. I don't think he wants to usher us into eternity until every single person has had the opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and had the opportunity to make a decision for him. Okay? So let me ask you this question and we're going to cover this a little bit today. Is technology seem to make us or getting us to that time when we have so much connectivity now that we've never, ever had before? Okay? So that's important. So I want to go to Daniel because Daniel uh, chapter 12 speaks a little bit about that in uh, verses 1 to 4. It says, at the time, Michael, the great prince who protects 
your people will arise. There will be a time of distress such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found in the book of in the book will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. If you are leading people to Christ and leading them into righteousness, you are like a star forever and ever. God honors the fact that we as a church are making everybody make that decision by spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. But you, Daniel, roll up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. And here's what I want to focus on. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. Now, when I first read that, I'm like, oh, yeah, that is so true. And it is knowledge is increasing. We're going back to and fro, and we're seeing what we need to do to increase the knowledge, and, and we're going to make ourselves a name, okay? But guess what? It doesn't mean that. Because in this particular context, it means that the gospel is going to be spread. That many people are looking to and fro, and the knowledge that is increasing is a spiritual knowledge. It is God's spirit that is going to come in the last days, and you will see a great revival that will pour out, that we are going to have a hard time containing. Amen? If you look at your pew and there's people, there's some people missing there, I think God's going to bring it up, bring them all in. And that's what's going to happen in the last days. In Daniel 12, it says in in verse 9 and 10, it says, he replied, go your way, Daniel, because the words are rolled up and sealed until the time of the end. Many will be purified, made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. That's important. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. And so my call here today is to be one of the wise that begins to understand what is happening in the last days. In an article entitled Increase of Knowledge and Lack of Wisdom in the Last Days, Steve Wolberg wrote about this in of Daniel 12. He says, as the eyes of men and women and children dart back and forth over the words of God, they have previously been locked up and sealed. Something wonderful happens. Knowledge shall increase. The reason knowledge increases is because in the time of the end, increasing numbers of humans will have the unprecedented opportunity, previously unavailable to former generations, to read for themselves and to understand the works of God. That is so powerful to me because what it means is that God can use any of our technology that mankind seems to be developing to connect many people to the gospel in a time that has never, ever been done before. We are living in exciting times, not depressing times. This stuff that's happening in the Middle East is exciting to me because we know that there are birth pangs that are happening, that something is happening in this world and there is a war that is coming. It's a spiritual war because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. What is happening in Israel, what is happening across this world is not a physical war, it is a spiritual one. And man is used, being used to fight it. And that's why we have peace, because the Spirit of God is in us. And that no matter what rocks our world, he is stable. Now, we've heard it said that the devil will try harder because he's in the two-minute warning. Have you ever heard that before? Do you know what the two-minute warning is in football? Let me explain it for the Eagle fans out here. <laughs> when, when you're in the two minute warning it says hey time is running short and if you're behind what do you do 
You try their best to catch up. You have a two-minute offense, right? Because you have to catch up. And the devil knows that his time is short. The devil knows that the score is against him. But he doesn't believe it. He doesn't see. He doesn't look at the scoreboard. He is still wanting to do what he needs to do. But I've got to tell you something. God sees it too. God has seized the two-minute warning. And I guarantee you, he knows more than anyone what the time is short to influence his creation back to him. Satan is going to try to take us away from God, but God is working harder and harder to bring us back to him in the last days. His tremendous love and compassion, plus his urgency to get the word out, eagles many, many, many coming to him. That's why I believe that this is prophetic in the last days. That this outpouring of the Spirit is going to happen because God is not going to tolerate the way it is going now. He is not going to tolerate the darkness in this world overcoming the light because it is impossible to overcome light with darkness. But darkness can be overcome by the light and the light of Jesus Christ. I mean, you look at what is happening today. God is using technology to get the word out. One article states these stats. Uversion, a top downloaded Bible app for mobile devices, has over 100 million total downloads and counting. It's also been one of the top 100 free apps for three consecutive years. Another stat, more than 66,000 people are using a Bible app at any given second. I have no idea how they come up with that, but it sounds good. 77% of people say they read the Bible more frequently because they have it available on a mobile device. And two-thirds of people prefer Bible apps because it gives them access to multiple versions of the Bible without added cost. That is such a powerful thing to me. How many use your Bible in a mobile app? How many use your Bible today or using your Bible on your cell phones and, and tablets and devices? Okay. Stop using them now. (laughs) Listen to what I'm saying. Just kidding. He goes on to say, remember the vast bulk of human history, very few people had access to, had ever looked upon, and were privileged to own a copy of the Bible. But everything has changed. God will get his word out. Now, why do we need more of a move of God in the last days? That's a good question. I'm glad you asked that. Do you know why there needs to be a move of God? Because we mess things up. We can't save ourselves. We need God to come in and save our souls. But the reality is that we ignore him. We use our own wisdom. Wouldn't it be nice if for once I actually heard God as a solution to some of the things that are happening in our world today? Wouldn't it be nice if the media would say, hey, God is the solution. We don't need to get rid of guns and we don't need to do this and do that and we don't need this climate change emphasis. We need to get right with the Lord Jesus Christ because God is the solution to any human dilemma. That is fascinating. I keep looking for it. Maybe Fox has some people down there that, said, that put you know, God as, as, a, uh, as a solution. But we are on our own here. And we've done it on purpose because we are ignoring God. Look at what God is here. I, I, was, I was thinking about this and all of a sudden my mind went to Genesis 3, 6. And here is Eve being tempted by the devil. And Genesis 3, 6 says this. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food pleasing to the eye and also desirable for what? Gaining wisdom. Huh. And I'm thinking, all the wisdom that she could ever need is right there in the garden with her. It's called God. And yet, the serpent successfully made her look at herself and maybe take care of it herself. Independence. Note the independence from God and the reliance on their own wisdom. Now let's go. How many have heard of the Tower of Babel? 
Everybody was kind of unified at that particular point. And yet Genesis 11.4, they have God with them at, at this point. And it says here in Genesis 11.4, come let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Wow. Once again, independence from God, reliance on themselves. Is that a benchmark in today's world? We ignore God, we rely on ourselves. I don't know if it's a good formula, but that's what's happening in our world. But you know what happened? This is the neat thing about God. And I love the fact that Pastor Ryan came up after the worship last week at the 11 o'clock and he actually said, do you really understand what holy is? We're singing about God being holy. Do you really understand what holy means? He is perfect. He is without flaw. He knows completely what is happening. He sees everything. He is not blind. His arm is not too short. His timing is right. He's a powerful God. I don't know if you need to know him. He is a powerful God. Here's his love. He scattered them. He confused them. Now everybody is scattered to their own nations. They're finding out who understands each other and now we have what we have is all the nations of the world, right? That's how we got there. Now, listen to me carefully because this is really neat. That's Genesis 11. Genesis 12 is God calling Abram. <laughs> I love this. Shows God's love because God called Abram to create a nation that he wanted to spread his love from. He says, you know what? You people want to make a name for yourself? I'm going to make a nation that is going to represent my people. And then he did that. And the nation became what? Israel. God's people to this very day. And because of their disbelief, we were grafted in as Gentiles. We now have Jesus. We are all a part of that Israel, gen you know, genealogy now. That God's love is all for every single person that walked the face of the earth. He wasn't isolating Israel and saying, these are the only people I'm going to save. He was using them as a bridge to his love because they decided they wanted to do it their own way and make a name for themselves. I don't think God likes that very much, do you? But we still rely on our own wisdom and understanding. You know what God's word says about our wisdom? Can I share with you a few scripture? A, little, a few. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 10 to 14 on your screen. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolish and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. They're kind of isolated and don't understand what we can see. In verse 18, it says, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. It does not make sense to them, but uh, to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. But listen to verse 19, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. <laughs> That's kind of a prophecy out of Isaiah. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. In other words, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, it is not an intellectual decision. It is a heart decision that you can't make sense of any human intellect whatsoever. It is by faith that we are saved. You can't think your way into heaven. You can't understand God. We're not supposed to understand God. We have a brain that is limited. We have flesh that is limited. And we understand God through the Spirit. Because he is limitless. 
trying to fit into a limited vessel. That's why we need the Spirit of God. Not the wisdom of this world. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Listen to verse 25. This is really powerful. Not that the rest of the scripture isn't, but this is, this is the highlight for me. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Do you realize what he's saying here? He's saying that you take the most intelligent person in the world, and if there was such a thing as the foolishness of God, it would never match it. If you give me the strongest person on the face of the earth, it doesn't even measure to the weakness of God. Do you see the comparison? We cannot rely on ourselves because we don't get it right. We think we're right. We think we've got it, but we don't have it because we've not acknowledged God as our supreme source of wisdom, especially in the last days. Finally, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody thinks they're, they know everything, but God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. <laughs> we can't boast in ourselves anymore. It's as if today when we look at our world and we look at what is happening, it is, only, it is almost as if we are building our own technological Tower of Babel. And I love that term because what's happening is that we're becoming too wise within the human sense and it's becoming our own Tower of Babel. Why? Because we do not acknowledge God in our wisdom. We do things our own way. We understand things through our own minds. And the danger here is that we are building our knowledge base apart from God. Our limited wisdom and mindsets are quickly becoming what we rely on. And everything we are learning and the technology that we are developing is exploding every single day. Isn't it amazing what's coming out? Tim Sandel wrote this in 2018. He said, until the year 1900, human knowledge approximately doubled every century. However, by 1950, human knowledge doubled every 25 years. In 2000, human knowledge will double, would double every year. Now, he says, our knowledge is almost doubling every day. Look at what's happening. I, I want to compare the millennials and the Gen Zs or whatever the youngest generation is to the boomers and older. How many are boomers? Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, the young people I, I want to address because young people have absolutely no clue what a rotary phone is. They don't know what this box that we would go into and put coins in there called a phone to, to make a call, right? That was our cell phone right there. We need to find a place. Now we have smartphones, right? We're, the technology has gotten just in a short amount of time. And by the way, young people, privacy was only the length of the cord that was attached to the wall. I mean, I, we had a cord that was really long so I could go in the bathroom and shut the door and the cord is stretching, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's take a look at information. I don't know if any of the young people understand what an encyclopedia is. <laughs> or maybe even a library, you know, where we would get information. I would love the encyclopedia. I, was just, I hated to throw away the Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> I had a whole set of them. Now, we have the internet and Dr. Google. <laughs> we can find out everything we want, but do we know if it's true or not? Ah. Connectivity, you know, it used to be just in person. We'd have to meet, we'd have to go somewhere and meet. Now we got Facebook, social media, Zoom. You can meet anywhere you want. I mean, right now, I, as, as a counselor, 
I'm seeing people in California, North Carolina, Florida, and Arizona. Connectivity is happening so much in our world today. You can't tell me that something's happening there that's going to lead to the last days. Okay? How about music? All right? So nobody knows about records, although they are coming back. Albums? But here's, here's one for you, millennials. Eight-track tapes. <laughs> I remember eight-track tapes. But I didn't use it a lot. I had cassettes, okay? And I'd have my Walkman do in the yard. And, you know, and if you wanted to repeat a song, you had to rewind and hope that it... All right, right there. No, I've got to rewind a little bit more. Incredible. What's happening today? I have an iPod. That's even old. Because now everything's on a smartphone, right? Every day, iTunes. You, I mean, everything is set up digitally. You, you don't have any problems that we had growing up. Money. Does anybody know what cash is anymore? So we used to get, go and get money and checks. Now we got chip cards, digital banking, and there's no need for cash. One of the things that really blew me away is the first time I got a credit card that had a, had a microchip in it. Because I knew we're headed somewhere. <laughs> shopping. You don't know, when you had to go shopping, you had to go to the bank and get some money. Or you get your check if the store accepted checks. Now we have internet shopping, Amazon, home delivery, things just appear on your porch <laughs> overnight. <laughs> even with DoorDash now, you don't even have to go to the restaurant. You can just pay somebody to go and get your stuff. You can even pay Walmart, somebody to, to deliver something from Walmart to your house. I don't like that. <laughs> How far we've come. Did you know there used to be things called price tags on items? Now it's barcodes. One of my favorite things was an AM FM transistor radio when I was growing up. Used to love the crackle of the AM band. Now we have satellite radio that just transmits everywhere. Here's something for a millennial and the younger people. Do you even know what an atlas is? or a map. You see, when I planned a trip, guess what I did? We plotted it out, we opened up the atlas, I looked at the routes and see where it was gonna go. And what do we have today? GPS, how far have we come? The only thing is, with GPS, sometimes you need an atlas to check the GPS, because it leads you all sorts of different ways. They haven't perfected that yet. I remember in education, you know, we were doing math by hand. We had formulas, you know. I mean, we had to show our work. Now we've got calculators and computers that just do the work for us. We're dumbing down our generations, aren't we? We used to have to do the hard work of cursive writing. There is no such thing as cursive writing anymore other than signing your name. Hopefully, they're still learning that. But folks, you can see how technology is taking us a long way. But as we look at Satan's hatred of all things God and man's continual independence from God, one explosive key insight emerges for me. And it is this. God uses Satan's hatred and man's independence for, from God brilliantly in his future plans. Listen to this. God uses Satan's hatred and man's independence from God brilliantly in his future plans. When you really think about it, and, that, and this, this hit me one time, that God allowed Satan to destroy himself by allowing Christ to be crucified. I want you to think about that for a minute. God allowed Satan to crucify Jesus because it was going to be his own demise. I mean, Satan, if you're that dumb and you keep buying into things, and I don't mean to slander celestial beings, that's not cool, all right? But you, you understand what I'm saying? His hatred blinds him from seeing what he's doing, and God is going to use that. 
that even in the last days, God will allow man and Satan again to do what it will take to fulfill the Antichrist's agenda and power, but will eventually lead to Satan's and evil's demise. Because I guarantee you that everything God allows does not make sense to us. But it is for our ultimate good for eternity. God is not interested in building our kingdoms here. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you as well. Don't put your houses, your kingdoms, everything here. We are living here, yes. But let's build our kingdom in heaven. Amen. Amen. So I want to show you how it's all fitting together. Now, I'm, there's a bunch of scriptures here that I'm not going to read for the sake of time in the book of Revelation. You can read them online. I have them all online. Everything that I'm, that I'm preaching here is going to be online in the after sermon notes. But I just want us to understand the bigger picture. What is going to happen in our world eventually is going to be an antichrist that is going to come. It is going to be somebody that makes peace with Israel. And it will be that way for three and a half years. And then he will violate the temple in the desecration of abomination. And guess what will happen? Then God's judgment will come. And that's how he's going to usher in the battle of Armageddon where all nations are going to come against Israel. Because it is Satan fighting against God. And do you know the end of the book? We win. Right? But what happens is he's given great power. Okay? He's going to be given great power to deceive many and to persecute believers. The believers that are here. And I just want to read one scripture in, in Revelation 13, verses 15 and 17, because not only is there going to be an antichrist, but there's going to be a false prophet. So there's a one world government system coming, and there's a one world religion that is coming. Everybody's going to worship the beast, worship the antichrist. Okay, and here's what it says in verses 15 to 17. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. He also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. Now that is profound because what is happening in our world today? I want to take us on a depressing trip. Are you ready? I really did depress. I need, they need all, the nine o'clock needed therapy after this. I want to give us a little bit of a picture and if you can bear with me, I know that we're running low on time. Are you okay? I'll, I'll, we'll release you by three. But Greg Paschal, who is a special counsel to the ACLJ, co-author with Tim LaHaye, wrote this. He says, Google advertises that its cloud platform for data storage and retrieval can handle some four trillion message transactions per month. The Knowledge Society has also tabulated some startling facts that the meteoric rise of big data. In 1986, the growth rate of data storage was 23% per year. By 1996, it had increased 800%. And by 2004, data storage was up 4,100%. The report cites Google's former chief executive officer, Eric Schmidt, who said in 2010, the total of all documented information between the dawn of civilization through 2003 equaled roughly the amount of data being created and stored every two days. Are we aware of what's happening in our world today? Meanwhile, tech giants like Qualcomm and Cisco are trying to create a universal global standard, a language to enable all digital devices to quote unquote talk to each other. Such a project has the potential to link together an ocean of digital objects across the globe, such as automatic garage doors in homes. This is already happening, right? Heating and air conditioning thermostats. Lawn sprinklers, baby monitors, video games, personal vehicles and taxi cabs, central offices, building controls, restaurants and retail stores, as well as television, radio, cell phones, computers, and of course, millions of security cameras around the world. Don't you know what's coming? 
Microchips. Thousands of microchips, right? (laughs) Have been implanted in people around the world for doing tasks as simple as swiping the password on their workplace technology or entering a sporting arena without tickets. Between now and 2025, one source forecasters project $15 trillion will be spent to develop ways to connect things to the internet so that they can be monitored and controlled. Me and Dorothy just went on a cruise a couple weeks ago on Princess Cruises and everything was controlled by what they called a medallion. And this is what it looked like. Okay, it's a quarter size thing. But it was fascinating because it was the only thing you needed on the ship. You didn't need your wallet, you didn't need anything. This thing would buy whatever you wanted to buy, whether it be in the gift shop or in the restaurant or whatever. It would open your door and you could see where each other was. I could, I could look at it and then locate Dorothy. Oh, she's on the promenade deck over there, okay. She could spot me. This is technology. It's here, okay? It is here. How about this? Another kind of tattoo is already in production to be both a mark and a gateway to the marketplace. This is called the duo skin tattoo. So if you're not familiar with the fact of the mark of the beast, digital tattoos are in the works. Business Insider states that 12% of Americans are already wearing technology such as wristbands to monitor their heart rate and other medical issues. How many have them? Come on. You've got the mark of the beast there. Now, strike that from the record. Technology is good. I'm, what I'm pointing out is how it's going to be used in the end times, Okay. Business Insider also reports a kind of technology called the Internet of Things, where anything can transmit data or be controlled through the Internet. They say that it is forecasted by the year 2025, there will be more than 55 billion IoT devices placed in and on things like cars, appliances, clothes, most importantly, people, to make life easier and more efficient. I remember I was, um, I was reading a book on, on this technology, RIFD uh, chips, years ago. And they were saying eventually what's going to happen, everything's going to have a device in it. So all you have to do is put all your groceries in a basket and just walk out the door. And it'll all be deducted out of your account. Didn't that, isn't that something? Are you depressed yet? SpaceX, manufacturing 120 Starlink internet satellites per month. Basically, the goal is to make a global internet that is accessible literally everywhere on the planet. It's happening. Connectivity. How many in this room, only one person I saw at 9 o'clock, have ever heard of Amazon One? I don't even see anybody. All right, Dorothy, put your hand down. You already know about it. (laughs) Amazon One. It's a fascinating thing, this technology. And I was reading about this. And here is a CBS News in July of this year. Basically said, one scan does it all. It's a free contactless service that lets you use your palm to pay, enter, or identify yourself. By the end of this year, all 500 plus whole food markets, locations in the U.S., will offer Amazon One for payment. What it is, is you you record your biometrics, and that biometrics is attached to your accounts, your bank account. So they have certain scans, scanners, all you have to do is to go, and when you're checking out, just hit your palm over the scanner, you're done. Technology, right? It's there. It is already, this technology is already available at 200 locations across 20 U.S. states, including Arizona, California, Idaho, Oregon, and Mississippi. Uh, Apparently, it hasn't gone to Delaware yet. Okay, AI. Let's be aware of AI, guys. I I don't know a whole lot about AI, but there's a lot of scams going on, and they're using voice recognition for 
older people. They are actually calling older people having masked. The AI is actually taking the voice of their child and asking for money. I've been kidnapped, I've, I'm, I'm arrested, I need money. And you know what the figure was in this report? One billion in losses in 2022 to scams like that. And CEO of uh, Google, Sindar uh, Pachi, can't pronounce his name. Anyway, it was in a recent article here that Dorothy printed out. He says, I think most of would agree with Pachi, at least with the part about AI being a profound technology. In a lot of ways, it enables computers to do things that they could not otherwise do, which means that humans are able to do things we couldn't do. Let's get scared in this world. But according to Pesci, it's also dangerous. When asked by CBS News Scott Pelley about the downsides, Pesci explained what keeps him up at night. I mean, the downside is at some point that humanity loses control of the technology that is developing. He says the urgency is to work and deploy it in a beneficial way, but at the same time, it can be very harmful if deployed wrongly. And if we don't have all the answers there yet, and the technology is moving fast, so does that keep me up at night? Absolutely. Okay, are you depressed? No? Okay, good. I want to close, I want to close by giving some takeaways for the church. What do we do with all this stuff? Because I know that when Ryan is talking and, and, and I'm, I'm sitting here, we're giving information. We're sharing with you what is happening in our world today. And a lot of it you probably haven't heard before. I didn't know what Amazon One was until it was introduced to me. I was reading about it. But it kind of excites me because it means that God is closer and closer to coming. And my day in eternity is closer and closer that we don't have to be in this world. Enjoy what is happening. Don't get rid of your technology. Just monitor it and understand what it could possibly do. And I trust, well, let me just do a takeaway here and then I'll, I'll kind of get there. The first takeaway as we get ready to close is stay connected to your anchor, which is the church. We need to stay connected to one another because this stuff is happening under our nose. But this is a good time where we get spiritual guidance, together groundedness. We get grounded. We have fellowship safety because we need to be alert, but we don't need to panic. And when, when Pastor Ryan can do this and we can talk to one another, we can expose, because there's a lot of questions. Well, is that the mark of the beast? Is this this? Is this this? I tell you what, we are still, as Ryan had said a couple weeks ago, we're still kind of a ways away yet from some of this stuff happening. But you can see the technology is happening. And I think that what we need to do is stay attached together and be together so that we can encourage one another, we can ask the right questions, and we can, we can investigate things. This is so powerful. And online, it is powerful too because you have access to us. We need to stay together because we don't know what is going to happen. But we need to stay together because the persecution's coming. I'm amazed at God's protection of our church, how he continues to protect us. Let's let God continue to do that. COVID tries to destroy us, but God is greater than COVID. Amen. He is greater. Number two, employ our critical thinking and discernment skills. Critical thinking and discernment skills. Don't listen to everything you hear. Don't be dragged away. Think for yourself. Don't follow the crowds. Watch what influences you. Young people, watch what influences you. There was a stat that I read that Four years ago, 22 young people got 22% of their news from TikTok. Today, it's 43%. And we're believing it. Do you know what the power of suggestion is? How many of you saw that car that crashed in Buffalo and that was first reported as a terrorist attack and they had to pull back? And if you don't ever listen to it all the way, you tend to spread that stuff. I mean, there are two things, there were two times in scripture that things were spread, okay? It was when the 10 spies came out of the promised land and they said, no, we can't do it, it can't do it. 
God had led him there, it, it brought the entire nation down. And then the second time that people listened, and they shouldn't have listened, is when the Pharisees were exciting the crowd for Barabbas instead of Jesus. We are gullible people. Let me ask you this question. How many are human? Very good. Those of you who didn't raise your hands, I want to see you later. <laughs> but listen, and we're almost ready. Sorry. Are you okay? Yeah. Hang in there with me a little bit. I only get to do this every so often, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to take Ryan's time. No, just kidding. <laughs> we're human. We have finite understanding. Don't listen to what you're hearing out there. Think for yourself. That is so important in this day. Listen to God and his word and stay connected to the church. Number two, know your, or number three, know your word. Know your word. Because it is used to feed us God's truth. It is used to combat the enemy's deceptions. Deception is going to be the day of our society. Darkness is here. But I'm here to tell you that when you know the word, the light will never, ever fail you. The light beneath your wings, the light in your path will never allow the darkness to overtake you. Light is stronger than darkness. Darkness will never overtake light. Stay out of the darkness and get into the light. Get into the word. Know your word. You hear Pastor Ryan talk about that all the time. We've got to learn for ourselves. And I'm going to tell you what. That's one of the reasons why I can hear something and immediately my mind is challenged. Why? Because I know what the word says. I know what the word says about marriage. I know what the word says about gender. I know what the word says about life. Stop believing what the world is telling you, what is right and wrong. We've already read how it's kind of messed up. All right, finally, know who you are as a believer. Know who you are as a believer. You are creation of God. Jesus died for you. The world is going to have a different definition. Folks, do not believe what social media says. Do not believe what other people say, what our influencers are saying. We have people in our world that are becoming eating disordered. Young females are becoming eating disordered because they're listening to TikTok and they're listening to the trends that are happening. I read an article just recently, which is weird. It was saying that young people are young people and teenagers are wanting to be diagnosed with autism. And they're going to therapists and they're trying to fit the social isolation and all of this other stuff that probably has a different way of identifying it, right? And they're going to therapists and they're saying, I'm autistic. And, then, and they, they, the therapists are saying, no, you're not. You don't fit the criteria. And they're getting angry. 